Welcome to this evening's uh, Compline service from St John's Church in Egham. Today is Tuesday the 6th of October. My name is Simon Fraser, I am one of the Associate Ministers of the Church. Before we start the service, shall we just spend a few moments in silence, preparing our hearts to meet with the Lord. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We're now coming to our time of confession. Should we just spend a few moments thinking about the day that we've had? There'll be things that we can thank God for, but there may be things that uh, we might regret where we haven't been at our best. A few moments of silence and contemplation before the Lord. We say our confession together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the, the Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now come to our Compline hymn, which we say together. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you would steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we may no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. We now continue to our journey through the book of Psalms, and tonight we're looking at Psalm 119. The particular verses are 81 to 88. My soul faints with longing for your salvation. But I have put my hope in your word. My eyes fail looking for your promise. I say, when will you comfort me? Though I am like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your decrees. How long must your servant wait? When will you punish my persecutors? The arrogant dig pits to trap me, contrary to your law. All your commands are trustworthy. Help me, for I am being persecuted without cause. They almost wipe me from the earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. Preserve my life according to your love, that I may obey the statutes of your mouth. Amen. Now, there's a very strong sense of desperation in these words. It's as if the, the psalmist is at the end of his tether. And yet there are also words of commitment to God and his trust in him. From the very beginning of this section, the psalmist is appealing to God to rescue him. My soul faints with longing for, for your salvation. His strength is failing him. 
He can't go on much longer, and yet he declares where his hope lies. But I have put my hope in your word. He is standing on the promises of God, and he is bearing his soul to God now. In the next verse, he says, my eyes fail, looking for your promise. In other words, I am worn out. I can't go on much longer like this. And he questions God. When will you comfort me? Again, he is appealing to God to help him and comfort him. In verse 83, the psalmist says he is like a wineskin in the smoke. Now, I'm trying to imagine what a wineskin in the smoke would look like. I'm picturing a wineskin in the smoke and heat of a fire, getting wrinkled and all shriveled up and smudged by the smoke. Maybe that's how he felt. Even though he feels like this, he goes on to say, I do not forget your decrees. He is holding on to God's word. In verse 84, the psalmist cries out in his impatience, How long must I wait at your servant wait? When will you punish my persecutors? He cries out for justice and he wants it right now. Perhaps this is something that he can really you can really identify with. Don't we all cry out for justice when we see injustice and wrong? It's part of the way God has created us to be. Our psalmist goes on, the arrogant dick pits to trap me, contrary to your law. He's saying I'm up against those who would do me great harm. Then in verse 86, all your commands are trustworthy, declaring the righteousness of God. And then he appeals for hope again. Help me. For I am being persecuted without cause. There is no fairness in what is happening to him. He goes on to say, They almost wipe me from the earth. My life is on the line. And yet he says, But I have not forsaken your precepts. He is still trusting in God. A final appeal in this section of the psalm. Preserve my life according to your love that I may obey the statutes of your mouth. Save me that I may be your obedient servant and be the man you have called me to be. Some final thoughts about this passage. There is no doubt that the psalmist is going through extremely difficult times and he's crying out to God and bearing his soul and showing not a little impatience. Now, we might think that we could never talk to God like that. And yet what we have here is a man at the end of his tether, telling God exactly how he feels about it. No matter how we dress up our prayers to God, God knows exactly what is in our hearts anyway. We can't fool God with flowery words. He knows us through and through. He knows what's in our hearts. I'm just wondering, have you ever been at your wit's end? Have you ever been at the end of your tether, not knowing which way to turn? Well, our psalmist turns to God and tells God exactly how he is feeling. Perhaps this is a good example for us, to be, to be real about our circumstances and to be real with God. One very final thought. We can also share our troubles with someone, perhaps in our church family, someone we can trust. It is good to share our joys and our sorrows. It's what being family is all about. Amen. We now come to our expressions of faith. And I think our psalmist could have written these words himself. They really fit in with the psalm we just read. So we say together, Lord, you've always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. 
Lord, you will always give him strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it be hidden now, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today I believe. And finally, Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe. And though you be silent now, today I believe. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes, my own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We now come to our time of prayers. Shall we pray together? We thank you, Heavenly Father, that when we are going through difficult times, that we can bring our troubles to you. And you have drawn us together as a church family to love and support one another. We particularly pray in these times of uncertainty for all those affected by this virus, whether it be health or employment or any other issue connected with COVID. We pray that in the days ahead that you will sustain us and we will draw strength from you and each other as we battle together. But we also pray for opportunities to share our faith with others in our community, to witness what you, Lord, have done for us. Like the psalmist, we stand on your word and on your promises. We pray that you would give us grace to get through it each day and to love one another and a peace that only you, Lord, can bring. And now shall we spend a few moments in private prayer, thinking and praying about those we love and care for. private prayers. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to see beyond our own circumstances and to see where you are leading us in all of this. May we find comfort in your word and in our relationship with you and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray whatever our circumstances that we will praise you for the awesome God that you are. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us pray for our daily bread as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service draws to a close. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I am placing my soul and my body in thy safekeeping this night, O God. In thy safekeeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safekeeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause, keep me this night from harm. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now, this night and for evermore. Amen. It remains for me to say good night and God bless.